Hello, big team. Hello, friends. Welcome to Lizzie Payne Loves Books. I'm Elizabeth. A few months ago, I started a series here on my channel called Literary Cookbooks, and I showed you the literary cookbooks that I own, and I checked one out from the library as well. It's a book that I would love to own, but at this moment, I don't have my own copy, and I thought that I would start a new series where I read and reviewed each of these cookbooks and made a few recipes from each of them, and it's going to be a long running series. It's going to be a while. It'll take me a while to get through uh, all of these books, but I have finished reading one, and it's the one that I don't own. I, I started going ahead, well, I since I had it checked out from the library initially, I started reading it, and then I had held on to it too long, so I had to send it back to the library. Meanwhile, while I had it the first time, I did make a couple of recipes, and then I eventually got it back from the library. I finished reading it, and I made another recipe, and of the three recipes that I have made, I did show some brief, um, I mean, I did film some brief footage of each of those, so I want to just tell you a little bit about it and show you what I made and let it go with that. So this is Fanny Flagg's Original Whistle Stop Cafe Cookbook. It is based on the book Fried Green Tomatoes at the Whistle Stop Cafe, which is probably Fanny Flagg's most famous book. I have to find it here. Um, it is not my favorite Fanny Flagg book. My favorite, if you've been around here a while, you've heard me say my favorite Fanny Flagg book and my favorite book of all time, other than the Bible, is uh, a Redbird Christmas by Fanny Flagg. It's just wonderful. But this is a fun story. It has a movie and it has a cookbook. So I started, um, I, well, I, I started reading it, like I said, and then had to check it back in. And I knew that it was a book that I definitely wanted to come back and read from cover to cover. Uh, it was a fast read. I did read through the recipes. I kind of skim read the recipes. It's got some great photography in it. And also some interesting narratives about, about the South, about recipes, about eating in the South, about cooking in the South. And the, uh, the photos are all, I think they're all from like, the, oh, what era would that be? Like 40s, 50s, maybe even depression. I'm not even sure how far back they date. But they're all very interesting, um, very diverse, and I just really enjoyed the cookbook. So you might guess that my first recipe to try was fried green tomatoes. And that recipe, uh, there's actually two different recipes for fried, fried green tomatoes in this book. So I went ahead and made them both. Not at the same time. I'm trying to find it here. But um, anyway, there are two different recipes. So I made the first recipe and we really enjoyed it. It was before we started cooking mostly vegan around here. So I used actual buttermilk and things like that and eggs and, and all that. Um, I did take some footage of what it looked like. So let me stop the camera here and show you the footage of what I, uh, you know, what it looked like. And then I'll come back and tell you about the second recipe. Okay, so that first recipe, I believe they're just labeled one and two. Fried green tomatoes one and fried green tomatoes two. I still haven't found it in the in the book. But um, that first recipe, I, I thought was the best. If I was going to make them again, I would probably gravitate towards the first recipe. However, the second recipe, I made it wrong. So I think I made, I ended up making it twice because... I didn't read the instructions very well. Always read the instructions if you're making a new recipe. What it actually said to do was put the, um, you mix up your dry ingredients and your liquid ingredients and you're supposed to dip it in one and then the other. And I accidentally mixed it all together and dipped it and it came out very um, pasty and just, it was too much. Um, so I, if I'm, if I'm remembering correctly, I think I went back and uh, and made it a second time the right way. But even then, I still didn't like it. And I can't remember now 
if I did footage of both of those or not. If I did, you'll see it in the footage and, uh, and we'll come back. So I'm finally getting back around to trying recipe two of fried green tomatoes. And as you can see, I don't have green tomatoes. I didn't have time to go to a farmer's market where I could get green ones, but I mainly am redoing this recipe because the first time I didn't read the recipe correctly and I combined all the ingredients. There are five ingredients plus the tomatoes, and what you're supposed to do is dip the tomato first in the buttermilk egg mixture and let that drip, and then in the flour cornmeal mixture that also has some salt in it. I'm not going to give you the full exact recipe but it is in the Whistle Stop Cafe cookbook. Anyway, I mixed all that together and then they just came out a mess. They were edible, but this time I'm going to do it the correct way and let's see how they turn out. Well, I'm not as happy with these as I was the first recipe. And part of it could be because these are red tomatoes and not green the green would have definitely held together better. And I don't know if it would have made any difference in the chemistry of the breading or not. But anyway, I still think I like the breading better of recipe number one. But it was a fun experiment. And I think I'm going to make one more recipe from this book. Maybe a dessert before I put this video together. So my recommendation for fried green tomatoes is to use the first recipe if you have to choose. But, you know, again, everybody's different. So then I, uh, I had to send the book back to the library, got it back, finished reading it, and I knew that before I would do this video, I wanted to make at least one more recipe. So as I was reading through, I was trying to decide what I would make. There are a lot of meat-based recipes here, and we don't have meat in our house anymore because we've pretty much gone to um, a vegan. I still, at home, I try to cook vegan, but when I'm out and about, I mostly just eat vegetarian. I have not committed myself completely to to not eating eggs or milk or cheese but I decided to make the coleslaw recipe and it was very good now my footage does not look great because here's what happened I bought a head of cabbage for something else that I decided not to make and that was part of the reason I decided to go ahead and make the coleslaw recipe so I just chopped it up real fast I I didn't do a good job chopping it at all. I don't have a food processor and I just chopped it up by hand and then I stuck it in a bowl in the fridge for like two days and finally I was like, I need to do this. I need to make this recipe. So by the time I came back to actually mix up the, um, the liquid part, the marinade, if you will, I, uh, I noticed that the coleslaw had started to, to turn, not really brown, but just had started to to darken a little bit so it doesn't look as good as it could probably and the the mixture that you uh, mix the coleslaw with also had some something that was darker red in it like a balsamic vinaigrette or something like that I can't even remember now so that contributed to the darkness of it but I will show you what it looks like I did take a little bit of footage and then I'll be back to wrap it up okay I decided to make the slaw recipe from the Whistle Stop cookbook. The slaw looks a little bit yellowed now, the cabbage, because I cut it up a couple of days ago and just put some foil over it. I didn't have time to go ahead and make the the topping or the, the whatever you want to call the sauce, but um, it has some ketchup in it. That's what makes it a little bit of an orange tint. It's got vinegar and ketchup and things like that and some onion, and so I have just uh, processed it in the little mini food processor that we have and so I'm gonna pour it on here and toss it and there is the finished product I don't have any kind of a tool or anything to cut my cabbage super small so I just cut it by hand and I didn't do that great of a job but it's the taste that counts right I hope it tastes good I haven't tasted it yet okay I tasted it and I like it uh, this is another good recipe that I would make again and it was very simple to make so yay for that 
So overall, I really enjoyed the reading experience of um, going through this book, reading the recipes, reading the narrative. If you are someone who likes to read cookbooks, this is a great one to pick up. See if your library has it, if you don't own a copy yourself, and try a couple of recipes. Let me know how it goes. If you enjoy Southern humor or Southern cooking or Southern hospitality, then I think you will enjoy this book. So that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to have another literary cookbook review for you by early in January of 2022. I am currently re reading one right now. Meanwhile, I hope you're having a great day. Read a good book and God bless you.